either you know get behind them or they'll get really pissed off. <laughs> and I remember once uh, in the in the seventies when I was in England and I was producing and directing and writing and I wasn't singing, acting, no performing, nothing. Uh, and the Everly Brothers uh, had got back together for a reunion after 20 years or something. And they were at Albert Hall and I was a huge Everly Brother fan. And I got front row tickets and I got there and we, we, we got there to the show. And I remember thinking, I hope they do, you know, their hits. Because you, you don't know, you never know. I hope they do Kathy's Clown, I hope they do, you know, all, all these songs that I remembered so clearly. And I got there, and sure enough, they sounded exactly like they did, and they were singing Kathy, and I'm standing up crying. No! at the time, and there was no plans to go back and do any monkey stuff or any show business stuff, uh, performing. But I do remember thinking, if I ever do, if I'm ever asked to go back and, and sing some of those songs, um, I'm going to do it just as they remember it, because ultimately, and this last show we did was a, a good example of that. The, the little subliminal theme to some degree was these songs don't belong to us anymore. They belong to you. And that is what Mike Nesbitt's song, Tapioca Tundra, means. That's what it was about. It cannot be a part of me because now it's part of you. And he wrote that in the 60s. Oh, he's smart. He's a real smart. It took me another 30 years to figure it out. But, but uh, and it's true. And if you get that, then you can satisfy the audience and you can move on. I have albums out. I've done other things. I can sing a, a, a different song. But you do have to know where the meat and potatoes is of it, you know.